Those students are getting cheated. They will not succeed in the economy because they're not learning English. I have seen firsthand as a dual language teacher how my students outperform other students in English only settings. And welcome back to Square Off. Republican School Superintendent Tom Horn filed a lawsuit last week to block schools from teaching so-called dual language programs to English language learners. Horn says state law requires English language learners to be taught in English only. So why is Tom Horn pursuing this case? We're back with Democratic State Representative Annalise Ortiz of West Phoenix and Chip Scutari, a former Capitol journalist who is co-founder of SNC Communications, a bipartisan public relations firm. Chip, I want to go to the history. You were a Capitol reporter back in the day. You were there when the proposition that required English language instruction, uh, when that was passed by voters. Take us back to that time and, and, and tell us how this actually got through. Yeah, so this was 23 years ago, the year 2000. It's, it was a culture war of its day. It, there was a big national push, especially among Repu mostly Republicans, to have English only. You know, that was a big push all across. Um, it was kind of a litmus test. Um, it would help with the base. And so Tom Horn took this and ran with it. He also used this kind of language and a, a bit of some critics would say fear mongering when he ran for school superintendent the first time against Jaime and Malera. Um, and I think maybe some of this, you know, he's getting up in years. He's about 77 or 78. 78. He may be in legacy mode and he wants his legacy to be a culture war. Just, just a thought. Um, but I say just on this issue itself, as a parent of three kids, and Bram, you know this as a parent, what matters most is, are your children learning? Um, and if I had English language learners, the immersion uh, method is not working. You know, there's a great piece in the Arizona Agenda, uh, shout out to Hank Stevenson, he did a break, great breakdown on it, that recent test results show only 9% of English language learners are proficient right now, are English learners. So this bottom line is, you know, the teachers don't want it, educators don't want it, most Republican lawmakers don't want it. Governor Ducey came up with a bipartisan solution in 2019. So the bottom line for me as a parent is, if you want parental rights, Tom Horn, Think of my parental rights, and I want the best for my children. I want them to learn quickly, and I want them to move up the, the, the ladder in economic mobility. Okay, so great, great background there. Uh, Chip pointing out that four years ago, the Republican-controlled legislature unanimously approved giving the State Board of Education authority to allow dual language learning. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So great generational change. It shows you a remarkable change for this mm -hmm. state. Why is Tom Horn doing this then? Tom Horn is hearkening back to a dark, racist time in Arizona history. He is trying to get the band back together and play all his old hits. But as Chip said, Arizonans don't want to listen to that garbage anymore. From educators to business leaders and everybody in between, it is clear that dual language learning works. It sets our students up for success. And this is an attack on our Latino students and our Latino community. It needs to stop. Tom Horn needs to focus on actual issues within our public schools. Now, one, one quick thing, though. The one area where I do think he's right, and most lawyers will say this, is the law is probably on his side. So he's, he has a good chance of winning this lawsuit because, um, you know, if you read through it, it looks like we need a vote of the people to undo the 2000 vote of the people. Because it was over the, over the people. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I think on policy, he's definitely wrong. I said as a parent, a small business owner, someone who cares about our schools. But on the legality, he may be right, and that's why he's forcing this fight. I trust Attorney General May's legal opinion that she issued. We need to move on and we need to listen to the legislature that four years ago uh, approved these other types of, of language learning models that are working for students in Creighton, the school district that's being targeted right now, and others, including my school district of Cartwright in my district. All right, we'll have to see how this plays out. Let's end with Decision 2024. The Biden campaign launched a TV ad in Arizona last week showing the impact of his signature legislation on jobs and the Arizona economy. Voters nationwide apparently aren't buying it. A new poll shows Biden gets low marks on his handling of the economy. Let's listen to what Democratic Congressman Greg Stanton told me about how Democrats should sell the president's economic message. Let's listen. We're not in any way suggesting that the challenges of inflation, the challenges of the uh, housing prices are not real challenges. But we also have to balance it out with the outstanding things that are happening in the economy. And Stanton told me his district ranks fourth among all 430 plus congressional districts for the number of jobs created by the Inflation Reduction Act. That's not getting through. You heard his advice. How do you sell 
great jobs, historic low unemployment rate, but oh no, don't look at the gas prices. Yeah, I think it's two competing things going on simultaneously. Um, I think inflation has just ravaged consumer budgets. We've heard about the price of gas, the price of eggs. Um, but when you look at our Arizona economy, it is booming, especially when it comes to advanced manufacturing. When you looked five to six years ago, you know, when we're getting TSMC and LG and all these other projects, all these major projects, I don't think that's it's kind of in conflict with each other. But I think what matters most is next year at this time, what is the economy doing? How is the inflation level? And really, Bram, it's going to matter in five states next year, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, um, and a few other swing states. And so we'll see how I think our economy is doing pretty well, then it will be a state by state thing. Um, and I also think 2022 showed us that um, you know, the economy may be not what it was for baby boomers and Gen X. It may be more about climate resiliency, abortion rights for younger voters. So that economy, while it still tops polling what people want, it could be a kind of a shit cultural shift in what polling, what really matters to younger voters. Is Biden's only hope $2 a gallon gas and 2% inflation by election day? Look, it's going to take some time for voters to feel less economically vulnerable right now. Uh, I do think the Democratic Party needs to be out there knocking on doors and talking to people about the money they can save under the Inflation Reduction Act by weatherizing their home, for example, about the job opportunities that are out there, and about President Biden's pro-housing act, which going back to housing, uh, aims to make housing more affordable for folks. These are huge wins and we need to champion them and be loud and proud about the successes that President Biden has had. Yeah, just one. But $2 a gallon gas would sure be nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> inflation is almost down to 4%. Well, I don't know about $2 gas, but I just don't think the White House has done an effective job of messaging this. They haven't packaged it. You know, it's the economy stupid. They don't have a tagline like that. And that sounds superficial, but it resonates with people. So I think they have to do a better job of just messaging three key things this is doing for, you know, every, you know mom and pop out there and the, the small business owners and everyone struggling from paycheck to paycheck. Right, Got to end it there. Representative Annalise Ortiz and Chips Guitari, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.